What's up, what's up, what's up, super fans? We got a big one today. We're covering lots of subjects, lots to update you guys on. We'll let the music play on if I can figure it out. And we'll get started here in just a few moments. We're in for a banger today, that's for sure. Let's go. Oh, the room's filling up. What's going on, super fans? I'm going to ramble a little bit because I don't know how to get this music back started. But don't you worry. I know a couple weeks ago I said the roadcaster is going to be up and running. But, man, this thing is causing me problems. I've been on calls with some of the best in the business, and uh, there's just some dramas here. And that's totally fine. I will get this sorted where we can play music, have sound effects, do all kinds of what I can even plug in my guitar and sing you a song. But that's going to have to wait till next week. And um, that is the deal. We got my super co-host up on stage, the man, the myth, the legend, Louie Dog. What's happening with yourself, man? How are you doing over there in Port of Mau? You're not at the headquarters today. You're 20 minutes away from me. I'm lonely. I miss you. What's happening, bro? Hey, hey. I'm not so sure if I'm the man, the myth, and the legend because I think someone who's coming onto our space later today, I think he's the man that we are all looking forward to speak too and how am i doing and why am i not at the headquarters because i'm so freaking bullish right like oh i, I know that that's not a good reason but still um yeah things are really cooking in the crypto space uh we are just wondering what's uh the next move that btc bitcoin is going to the big daddy of the space but i'm sure that you know everything is not is going up 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 but you know is this deep a good buying opportunity? No one knows. And I saw a tweet by, by someone today that says, you know, it's 100% chance of NFT buying. So is that really true? I do not know. What are your guys' take, super fans? Maybe you can throw some emojis. And I also see our Dasha Day in the audience. How are you doing, man, Dasha Day? I still need to get her up on stage. Give me a second invite to speak it's it's out there it's on there dasha will come up to stage in a second let's keep our eyes out for a very very popular and famous uh veteran in the mma world let's look out for our friend in the uh in the audience here um when he arrives let us know man you don't want to make this guy angry um this guy's the who's who of mma so yeah let's get that done dasha day welcome to the stage how are you doing my darling Hi guys, thanks for having me. Good, good, really good. Thank you. The sun is shining and everything is um, is great. Thank you. And how, I mean, everyone I imagine is doing amazing as well. Um, so yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, I'll tell you who's not doing amazing. The people that bought a bunch of meme coins yesterday. Oh my God. Me and Dash have been looking at meme coins, trying to figure out this thing. I looked over her shoulder the other day. Um, actually yesterday and she was writing the meme coin bible she's figuring out these riddles semi new to web 3 and she just wants to bring value to you guys when she discovers fun cool things so i don't know if you guys bought the dip um i don't know if the dip will continue it's always a big magical mystery to her here in the crypto space but i will say a couple of things this is not financial advice um that's a disclaimer that i have to put out there but I'm just giving you my take on what's going down here. So we hit all time highs with Bitcoin, right? Now we're bouncing down a bit below. We probably bounce all over the place, up and down, all around. Ethereum still hasn't hit the mark. Now, do you think Ethereum's going to hit all time highs in this bull market? Well, it's pretty much a no brainer. How about Solana? Solana taking a tear from a low of like $9 in the, the bear market because of our good friend, uh, Sam Bankman Freed and the FTX collapse. He was a big supporter of Solana. So everybody thought that was dead. That came back from the dead and, and really has taken the world by storm. Um, but their all time highs is closer to above 300. So will they hit all time highs? I think the writing is on the wall. That's my take. Again, not financial advice, but I believe we're going to see all-time highs in all kinds of different categories. So we'll see what happens. NFTs are bleeding like crazy. 
But you know what's exciting about NFTs? NFTs are so much more than just these JPEGs that everybody thought that they were, you know? They're, they're digital access to, to different groups and different communities. And um, I have an announcement. If you ain't uh, reading my personal Twitter, my Super Soze Twitter, I have joined the ARC community. This is a, a pretty exclusive club. You need to register to get in there. You need to be a builder. You need to be able to give value to get the value of this community. But um, this is a prime example of a club that is gated by an NFT. NFTs basically are just these small little miniature programmable computers that you can do so much with, whether it be loyalty pre programs, access to clubs and different things with the ARC uh, NFT. I get discounts and freebies all over the globe. And I get connected to some of the biggest, baddest founders in the Web3 space. Um, it's not cheap, but I do it for you guys because more access that uh, we have to the brightest minds in this space, the more we can do together. So that's, that's that. What are you looking at, uh, uh, Louis Dog? What, what's happening out there? What, what, what do you see NFT-wise? What do you see um, anything-wise? I mean, for NFTs wise, it's rather shocking. But of course, like they say, you know, always uh, sell when people are greedy and buy the fear, right? And now I'm looking at my own, um, one of the NFTs that I own, which is Clonex. Uh, they're currently sitting on a 0 0.55 E floor, which is really shocking compared to the good old days when we were sitting much higher. And also alongside with uh, your own body, your club, they're currently like sitting at 13 ethereum so uh i believe that the good old days of uh, um nfts the liquidity will flow to that sector as well uh so i think currently now the liquidity is is uh is all going to the larger cap coins um because of the etfs and the, the bitcoin halving and whatnot and i saw a very interesting tweet um today uh on my timeline you know uh, forecasted by someone today's forecast you know 100 percent chance of, of nft buying so uh before it comes out i really want to hear from him later in the space like what nfts and coins is he looking at so yeah how about you chris uh what's your take on the current space i don't know man i build too much man so the only time i get to look at the entire space on a whole is the show notes that you put together here so um, that's about it. But I will. I am guilty of something. Me and me and Dash have been going through meme coins. I used to play Doge poker back in 2015. Even I don't know if I had um, my Doge coins from that platform right now, I would be a multimillionaire on a boat somewhere probably. Um, but that was like one of the first rug pulls. I think in 2017, 18, they they pulled the plug on that, and all my funds were gone. But at that time, it was like a few hundred bucks. That few hundred bucks would translate into millions, I'm sure, right now with Doge going. But Dasha just jumping into the Web3 world, she's like, okay, look it, I see these dogs and hats. I see these fluffy dogs and cats and animals and all of this stuff. What the hell does it mean? Because I'm attracted to it. It looks fun. It looks interesting. But what is the underlying promise? What is this thing? Is it just a casino of gambling? The more people in, the more up. Once they sell, it's all downhill. Well, the one prime example is Dogecoin. Elon Musk talking about accepting Dogecoin for Teslas. You know he's been a big advocate of that token and of that platform and of that blockchain. So um, I was guilty this morning of going on and snatching up some of the meme coin dips. I'm not going to tell you which ones. Okay, I'll tell you. Um, Myro, don't even know what it does. I don't know. We were looking at it yesterday. Um, I bought a little bag of that and I bought a little more of a bag of when tokens because I was winning pretty good on that 20, 25 percent dip. So I decided to jump in, man. But most of my time, 99.7 uh, percent of my time is super fans, super fans, super fans. And we got a lot to tell you about in this show about what's going on, the path forward and what's uh, going down. But this is kind of a special episode. So. D-PIN, Decentralized Compute, Artificial Intelligence. You guys know my backstory. I've built a lot of AI platforms in the blockchain space and outside. Um, and 
we want to talk a little bit about that. Social Fi and what's coming up with the Superfans platform is getting really interesting when we launch this thing. We will have some of the top creators, top projects, top everything joining for our launch. So that's going to be fun. We have NFT drops that I'm sure you want a little bit of alpha on that. But then there's a random hashtag in the title of this uh, space that it's... it's uh, it's a little bit outside. Now, listen, I would say crypto is 90% male, 18 to 35. MMA, 18 to 35 as well, probably 90% male. So there is one correlation there. Um, but we threw MMA into the mix here because we have a very, very special guest joining us today. Um, he is, he's been in the MMA space for, for a very, very long time fighting for organizations. I remember back in the day, King of the Cage. I think we have Bellator there and Strike Force, and you name it. He has been there. He has fought the who's who in the space. Um, please put a warm welcome, you super fans, for our very special guest. Um, he goes by the name NFT Kid on, on, uh, on Twitter here, the KO Kid in MMA. We got Keith Berry. Keith Berry, what's happening, man? How are you? Yo, yo, yo. <clears throat> yeah, good to be here. It's kind of my thing. I, I love weed as well. There's crypto and NFTs. But yeah, there is a 100% chance I'm buying today because I already bought two this morning. So it's already happened. So yeah, and uh, I'm definitely an advocate of NFTs. Kind of to going back to what you guys are saying, there's a there's an inverse correlation between NFTs and crypto. So when crypto goes up, especially it's the beginning of the bull market, a lot of people have been broke. They need to take profits. People are taking profits. It's not a big deal. But, you know, two or three months down the line, I really feel NFTs are going to rocket back up. Crypto is probably going to be even higher. It's just going to be crazy. I'm excited for this bull. And I think, um, yeah, it's just always how it's been. Uh, and it, uh, crypto and NFTs have inverse correlations. And people want to sell. People want to cut down the floors a little bit. But, you know, once things kind of stabilize a little bit, I think uh, NFTs are going to be looking good again. But uh, yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome, man. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. I got a ton of questions. I got a ton of stuff to cover with you. I think we'll jump into a few different show notes first. But yeah, very excited to have you on the show. Uh, maybe most of you guys don't know, I've been training MMA since I was, uh, I don't even know, 17. I started in karate when I was six and, you know, my dad was a kung fu artist. Uh, then MMA fighting came along and we had a, a few organizations like extreme cage fighting and UFC that came along. And then we realized that kung fu ain't got nothing on nothing. And, uh, you know, then we started to weed out all the showy uh, martial arts and uh, yeah, I've trained with a lot of guys. Rory McDonald's a buddy of mine. Um, been training, yeah, out of so many different camps across uh, the globe. I actually opened up my own MMA gym in Thailand and ran that for several years, fighting the toughest Thai guys on the planet. So I know a thing or two about this uh, fight game and looking forward to talking about Keith Berry. I've been a fan for a long time. And uh, yeah, we're going to get into the st I want your takes on MMA. I want your takes on everything that's happening in this wacky crypto space. And uh, just because you guys see, you know, athletes out there playing sports um, or maybe musicians playing music or the grocery store clerk at your local grocery store, just because they're doing those things with their time doesn't mean that they're not deeply into this space. You might be very, very surprised about how many people are actually in the crypto space, whether they're taking part or not. So it's really cool to have uh, to have you here, Keith. Um, Let's go into a little bit more news here with um, there's one really fun thing that's happened the last few days. So I, I forgot about me staking on the, the uh, super fans staking protocol. I'm tier five. I have a few hundred thousand tokens there that I keep on buying up, but I haven't staked in a while. All of a sudden I go to take a screenshot of the leaderboards of stakers and there's a couple people ahead of me um, that didn't sit well with me. And uh, the guy that was ahead of me, uh, his name is Tony Trader on, on, um, on Twitter. Don't know him. He's not part of the team. And I'm thinking, well, what the heck? 
I go check out his profile. He's got some good content going on there, but it's a pretty new account. He's got 170 followers, you know, probably a few close friends, probably a few of you super freaks because you probably saw him on the leaderboard, but fairly new account. So then I threw out a message saying, listen, I, I'm the founder here. I can't, I can't have you beat me, man. Like, thanks so much for the support. But number one spot has always been my spot at anything that I do. And so I'm coming back for that lead. So I wrote a, a message out there, throwing it down, saying, sorry, champ, but I'm, I'm coming for the belt. I jump up. I stake my tokens. And only a few hours later, he responds by, yeah, thanks, champ, but I'll take that back. And he then, again, staked more, and, and he's beating me on the thing. So I looked at my team, and I said, listen, let's, let's, let's help this guy out, you know? So we put our engagement army, we put a task up there because we really value our super fans that are participating, having some fun, and believe in the long-term vision of what we're doing. So we put a task up there to follow Tony Trader. If you do not follow Tony Trader, follow him now. Two days ago, he had... 170 followers. Today, he has around 10,000 followers. And believe me, as that task stays up there on the, the microtasking marketplace there on FanHub, um, that number is only going to grow. So thanks for the support. Um, the Solana blockchain is a little bit congested and a little bit ridiculous right now. So I've been trying to take that uh, championship spot back, but I can't do it. So Tony Trader, if you're responsible for Solana being like broken and slow, can you please turn it back on so we can compete, man? It's not fair to just bust apart a blockchain and, and uh, keep me out of the game. So yeah, love that. What's your take on that one, Louie Dog, with the participation of these super freaks, man? Like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, riding on to what you just mentioned, like, even in this point of time and this current space, we have 1,800 live listeners in, 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 in this space. It's really crazy, like, considering at this point of time, like, the average turn up for spaces throughout on uh, crypto Twitter, it ranged from 200 to maybe 500. But, but yes, I do agree that we have a really strong community, um, totally vibing over on Discord right now and also some of them over in Telegram. Yes, just be rest assured, I'll dig out some of your questions later, which you have prepared for Super Soze. And um, yeah, I mean, like uh, just to piggyback on what you just said about Tony Trader, it, it wasn't two days, it was one day. He was sitting at 100 followers and today at 10,000 followers, which really comes to say that, you know, the power of social fire, right? You know, everything starts from being a social media company to, to spread the word, get the message out there to, to pitch what's the project is doing this or that, you know, and so much on the current narrative for, for AI and gaming projects, you know, they are launching their, their TGE tokens, their NFTs, drops and everything, and everything needs to start from social fi campaigns. So really happy to building to be building this uh, super fans together alongside with the best team on Solana, super fans, and our best community out there, you super freaks. Uh, that's all from me. I'm so sorry, man. I, I think I just drank too much coffee today, but I'm really stoked to hear more from NFT Kit later on in the space. Yeah, man, like he knows a thing or two about building a community. And I think this is a really good time to like maybe hand it over to you, Keith, for just what we're doing here is we're building a social five platform to help creators and their fans win together, right? Blockchain has always been an incentive machine. It works. Bitcoin works. Ethereum works. All of these projects work when the incentives are correct and the participation in the network matches the growth and ambition and the usership of, of this stuff. But on social media, you are an absolute monster on there. I think you have somewhere in around 150, 170,000 followers. Um, we love to teach and train all of the people that are in our space on the best practices, how this stuff is done. How did you build up this audience? When did you get started? Have you put in like extra super effort there? What works? What doesn't work? Tell me your, your Twitter uh, journey, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. So everyone has like a, a different story, right? So mine is more specific. So when I think, was it you or was it your co-host maybe was talking about Dogecoin? So in 2019, uh, I got into Dogecoin just for fun with, with a friend and we used to like bet each other all this Dogecoin at work. 
And um, yeah, we were just buying it just for fun because it was worth pretty much nothing back then. And then um, then it started running up and I just started coming on Twitter more. And uh, I was I was basically a Dogecoin influencer because I, I didn't really use my Twitter. I was verified. I fraud with Strikeforce for the UFC. So they verified me. So I was like, oh, Twitter's cool because I'm verified. But I only had like two or 3,000 followers. So yeah, like I kind of just built from there. And I uh, came on and just talked a lot about Dogecoin. And uh, I had a tweet with Mike Tyson that like had him with the Dogecoin glasses. And uh, yeah, I just started getting a lot more. You just people liked that I smoked weed. People liked that I'm a fighter. And then um, people liked that I was into crypto. And it just seemed like this was like this untapped market that I never knew about. Like all these people like the same things. And I'm definitely an introverted type of person. I've gotten better on spaces. But um, yeah, I used to be way worse. So it's definitely taken a lot of practice. But uh, but yeah, I started with Dogecoin. And um, then from Dogecoin, I didn't really understand NFTs at first, to be honest. I was like, oh, I don't really get it. I don't get it. I don't know how. I kind of thought like the money laundering thing, like the, the cliche thing everyone thinks in the beginning. But um, people say community a lot and they kind of throw that term around. But this was like real community in Dogecoin when Dogecoin was first running up like even before elon really started talking about it all like when you're in that and you see how thoughtful people are and you know do only good every day <clears throat> it was just like a really cool vibe and um it was like bringing a resurgence to my mma career because everyone were going on youtube they were looking me up they were like randomly f i don't ever talk about my instagram but they were like following me on instagram and like just following my training so i was like man this is really cool i'm gonna like I'm going to put more time. I'm going to lean more into this. And uh, that's what I did. I mean, in the beginning, I was, I'm not as active. Well, I'm still pretty damn active. I talk a little more versus like I used to like everything. Like if it had anything to do with NFTs and you're posting art. And um, so people are hitting NFTs for different reasons too. A lot of people were in it for the money. But uh, I was in it for the love. I was in it for all the people checking me out, check out my fights and learning about kind of like bringing some, I don't know, it was giving me motivation to train, you know, it was doing a lot of things. So, um, so yeah, I just kind of branched out. I, I found NFT communities that were kind of similar to Dogecoin that were a lot of fun and just kind of like new and, um, yeah, I don't know. There's all different reasons why I got into certain communities in the beginning, but, um, yeah, I went through a lot I went into some rugs. I didn't know were rugs. I didn't really understand the whole concept of it. But, you know, then you learn you learn a lot, you know. And, um, yeah, I've been here since probably uh, 2020, pretty active. So uh, 2019, I, I've been here. I mean, I've been on Twitter since 2010. But I wasn't on crypto Twitter. I wasn't ever talking about NFTs. I would talk about fight stuff, and I would get, like, one like. And I had, like, 3,000 followers. And I, I would talk about, like, oh, I have a fight coming up, blah, blah, blah. And I would post something, and I would get, like, four likes. <laughs> so I was like, oh, man, Twitter. But, um, yeah, but it, it definitely changed for me. And a lot of things I did, I mean, I try to support artists all, all over the world. Because there's different blockchains that are more like art art focus that aren't like crazy like eth i mean there's there's some things on eth going for you know hundreds of thousands of dollars that are like abstract art you know and, and that that's crazy and those are like really you know wealthy collectors but there's other people in the world and there's a lot more of them that are just in iran or they're they're in turkey and they're different places in the world and they're using tezos they're using object they're they're using these other platforms to collect art so i really got into those community a lot i really like tezos as a as a coin and then i, I like their blockchain and i i think that's um i think that's gonna be a a little hidden not not hidden giant but a sleeping giant is what i'm trying to say so um yeah yeah i've collected on solana too i think solana is a great chain to collect from from new artists and stuff but um but yeah i kind of got into the art kind of aspect of it i thought like um i don't know i wanted to kind of like be a voice a little bit for artists so i would try to uplift a lot of artists and do spaces and get really high all night and just stay up all night and buy art and um yeah i was doing on eth in the beginning and eth that eth is just crazy but lately the last six months i've been trying to focus on like solana and tezos and stuff but uh yeah, it's a little bit about me. I'm I'm also an MMA fighter, so I train as much as I can. I'm always like training and stuff. 
Um, I, I talk about it more on my Instagram and stuff. I don't actually talk a lot about fighting on my actual Twitter because, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't do as good. Yeah, not that I'm always reaching for engagement, but like it's just like eh. But I, I add it in there when it's when it's necessary. I do love this new karate combat organization. Somebody mentioned karate earlier. I did taekwondo as a kid, you know. I did a lot of different karate's. One was called Mushi Do, and uh, UFC One. My instructor fought in UFC One. His name was Mark Hall, and um, yeah, I'm from Marietta, California. So he was like uh, the dojo instructor in Marietta where I grew up so I had a lot of exposure to the UFC to MMA when I was growing up when I was younger so I I just kind of like followed it I got in a lot of fights in high school and my wrestling coach was like dude you need to like you need to like get this straight before you get out of control like focus on something professional if you're a real he kind of put it like if you're a real man then you'll you'll get amateur fights. You'll be focused. You'll fight other people that are training, not these street fights and you know at whatever house parties. But um, I was fighting other wrestlers from different towns, so it was like I was fighting other athletes in high school. But it, anyways, to his point, I thought it was a good idea to just like focus myself on training more and focusing on something more um you know professional. So when I turned eighteen, I. I had a bunch of knockouts, so I first turned 18, and then I like had my whole high school there. I had like a 30-second knockout, and then my second fight, I had a six-second knockout, and then my third, it was like 10 seconds. So <clears throat> I got the name KO Kid. People are always asking me here on Twitter, like, you're a man. You're a man. Not always, but people do ask me sometimes. You're a man. Why are you? Why is your name Kid? It was because I got a nickname for fighting, and they called me the KO Kid. And then I've been so into NFTs lately that I said, fuck it, I'm the NFT kid because I've collected so many NFTs. I mean, you know, it's a little marketing kind of a thing, you know, I just like, fuck it. Um, but yeah, I've kind of leaned hard into that as well. Try to be like, an, I guess, an advocate to other fighters too. A lot of fighters ask me about NFTs and <laughs> I even had my buddy Sean Strickland that just freaking DM me about NFTs. Um, I'm actually going to post it later because I'm like, see, he does want to know about NFTs. Uh, he talked shit about him like a year ago, got him on a video for that too. So I should actually do a, a compilation video where he talks shit. And then now he's asking me about it and be like, look at this motherfucker changing right in front of us, like a damn chameleon. But, um, uh, anyways, anyways, that is hilarious, man. Thanks for the download. All like, listen, I can relate to one thing you said, being an introvert and trying to get better at this game. I'm the exact same way. Uh, I've been doing this a long time, but dreaded ever speaking at events and running these things. But I guess I was the the only voice on the team that was willing to give it a shot so I can relate there. Um, I remember I remember your, your coach, Mark Hall. I've been watching UFC uh, since the very, very beginning. Um, I, I yeah, I remember most fights out there um, from from way back in the day. I think that he's had some some pretty big fights um, as well. I think he fought Don Fry, and um, he's fought some other people. But uh, you don't usually talk about MMA, but you don't have any choice on this space because that's there's only two things I can speak about, and that's crypto and um, MMA. So I'd like to get deep and heavy into that. Um, let me go to my show notes real quick. Um, yeah, thanks so much for all of that. Listen, I, I joined the space last night really quick when I was, jumped in the sauna. Um, and uh, I could only join for a little bit, but I heard a, a very passionate um, conversation going on about something I think was, and you were in the space, something called um, the, the be good, um, speed pass or ride pass. Um, I don't know if you're involved in that project, but it seemed we do a lot of good. We work with the United Nations. We work with refugees on NFT projects and raised, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in this space. Um, and it's a big passion point. Maybe you can uh, tell us your involvement in that or tell us about that project and, uh, maybe we can give it some light. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. That's really nice of you. Yeah. Um, so they're actually giving a charity for kids, kids with cancer. And there's other ailments, too, not just cancer. But they're giving about $50,000. Um, they're giving it no matter what. So they're just adding it kind of into part of their project. And um, they do give every year. They're giving a little more this year because they're associating it with these these passes. And, uh, yeah, you basically go to Daytona, Florida, 
and um, you get to like when minting these passes, you get to go and like see these exotic cars, and then I guess they're renting the whole place for a couple of days, so it'll just be like a, pretty much an empty track for people that have got these passes and probably all their friends. I guess there's going to be celebrities and this and that. They definitely explained it a lot better than I am doing now, but um, but yeah, it's a cool project. It's called Be Nice, and um, you could probably just look it up and. And, and Twitter, it's be nice, and uh, yeah, it's called the Speed Pass. But yeah, they're they're giving away uh, some stuff for kids. It's with, I don't I don't want to say it's not with the Heart Association. It's with, uh, uh, it's like a it's like a big foundation. So um, they're actually in in cahoots with them, and they kind of made this whole project with them. But uh, but yeah, yeah, they were supposed to do a space this morning. Actually, I was going to do right before I got in this space. And um, I think they're they're going to reschedule for later, but th these guys are just really sweet guys. I think they actually came from like a venture capitalist background, but um, they're always giving back and always doing these things. And they said, "Hey, look, let's just give back a little more, and then make it into like an NFT project and bring all our friends." And um, I got brought in last minute, so th this um, this girl on Web three Pyro, um, she's just somebody I really trust in the space. And I, I've tried to keep a really, really good reputation in the space. And um, she referred me to them. And I was like, yeah, yeah I want to get involved. Let's do it. So, um, yeah, that's what's going on. They're definitely going to fly me out and, and take me out there and do all this nice stuff that they, they told me about in the DM. So uh, I'm excited for all that. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's what's up. That's amazing, man. Like to, to echo one of your comments uh, in uh, your introduction, talking about the community aspect of this. Um, it's really amazing how can communities come together uh, for a certain cause and uh, make a difference uh, with this technology. So we always love to support those uh, initiatives and stuff. And uh, we'll definitely post about it and get our super fans uh, knowledgeable. If anybody's out there, um, yeah, get in on that project and uh, do your support, do your thing. We'll, we'll have a task up there about it. And uh, anybody that's participating there will make sure that you're rewarded on our end as well. Because I love these initiatives. I love to participate in these initiatives. And uh, they're really important in the space where the majority is about the money. But the, the, the good kids like NFT kid, um, you know, we're here for the long run and want to change uh, the way we do stuff. So that's, that's honorable and amazing, man. Um, Louis Dog, you got any questions for the kid? You got anything? Uh, I got I got tons, man. I'm, I'm going to go into like rapid fire questions, if you don't mind, Keith, in a minute here, just about everything you've done in the sport and, and stuff. But Louis Dog, you got anything going on, bro? Yes, for sure, man. I mean, I'm, I'm really, really um, intrigued by by NFT kid or Keith Berry, right? Because I was expecting him to to be, you know, like like a guy with huge, uh, like a deep voice. But he was, you know, he's. Is very genuine. His uh, like what he shared. He's an introvert, but really seeing him like how he got himself involved in the fighting space and going on into Web three and using the technology of DeFi to to give value back to to other uh, groups of interest. So uh, my question to to Keith Barry, man. I mean, uh, right now many of us are are in between sitting on the edge. Like, uh, is crypto going? Uh, to dig further, or are we just going to go up only from here? If if I have a question to pose to you uh, on behalf of the community as super fans, if you have a choice to buy the fucking dip on one NFT and one crypto, what would they be? Over to you, Keith. <laughs> That's a good question. That is a good question. Um, what would I buy right now on the dip? Shit, what am I buying on the dip? I think I actually bought some Tezos this morning on the dip, but I was already gonna buy it. So but uh yeah, yeah, I do I do like Tezos. I I like Hedera as well. I think Hedera has a big future. Um I'm buying Dogecoin. I, I got some some Dogenals, some Dogecoin NFTs. So um yeah, I I want I would say I'm giving you I'm not giving you one, I'm giving you a couple, but definitely Tezos, Dogecoin and uh I don't know. Well, whatever else I said, I'm already forgetting. But uh <laughs> yeah. 
Nice one, man. Nice one. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting into this, man. You, you've just seen a lot in this space. You've been around forever. You fought in the WEC, uh, acquired by UFC, King of the Cage. I think you were like the, the champ there as well. Um, uh, Show FC, I'm looking through. Gladiator, I, I remember all these. Are, I've, been, I've been watching this stuff forever, man. Um, Strike Force, you were in Strike Force. I mean, it, it, the, the list goes on. Um, two questions that I'm always curious. Like if I meet fighters, I always forget to ask these questions, man. But uh, here's here's a double a double question. What was your favorite fight in your career, and what was the toughest fight of your career? Um. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. The, my favorite fight of my career, <clears throat> I was fighting this guy Cortez Coleman, and I went to Thackerville, Oklahoma. I think this was 2013 so it was like 11 years ago and uh yeah i was on weight i was doing everything fine and um i don't know i don't know why i do these kind of things i have weak moments you know i had a weak moment and it's just so stupid because i had a whole plan you know and so anyways i was on the plane i'm cutting a lot of weight <clears throat> and um this waitress she was like or a flight attendant she was like uh yeah, do you want these chips? I have extra chips. And they're like the ones you pay for. They're like the nicer ones. And I was like, oh, I'm dieting right now. I, I can't really have chips. She goes, oh, come on. You're dieting. And she did like this thing. And she kind of like wizard. Like she used like some sorcery on me. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I'm fine. If I really eat these, I like talked myself into it in that second ate the chips, tasted delicious. I hadn't had salt in like 10 days. And then I thought, wait, what did I just do? I'm going to retain all this, any water I put on, oh boy. So I had a little bit of a difficult weight cut. And then this guy that I was fighting, uh, I forget his fucking name. What's his name? Uh, did you Cort say Cortez? Cortez Coleman. Yeah. And he had these cowboy hats and he was like this, uh, he's like a black cowboy. And he had these cowboy hats, and he's talking all this shit. He wanted to cancel the fight. I ended up weighing in at 186.4. So, and they were supposed to give me two hours to cut the last 0.4 ounces. And um, so he complained about it. And this was back in the day when that guy War Machine, War Machine was in his corner, and War Machine was like talking all this crap. And um, it was his hometown. So I ended up, I ended up all. I'll be to be transparent. I ended up taking an edible, and uh, before the fight, because I was just like a little stressed. It was a lot, a lot of nerves, and I just took a nap. I napped for like four hours. We were a swing fight, so I didn't fight till like eleven p.m. And I woke up at like ten p.m. from five p.m. And then I was like, "Oh, okay." I warmed up. I got in there, and I literally just ran at this guy when the fight started, and. Um, the fight kind of went viral on YouTube after I won by a split decision. I almost knocked him out a couple times, but I didn't get the knockout. But there was one point in like the third round, I was so tired that I literally just stood up and I let him elbow me in the face. And I was like standing elbows like three or four times, maybe like five or six times. And so I'm bleeding. It's just like, it was a really exciting fight. It made me like dig deep and uh, I ended up beating him in his hometown and uh, it just felt really good because that guy War Machine was a dick. So I was just like a big F you to him after the fight. And um, yeah, somebody from the crowd gave me a $1,000. And back then it was like, that was like a big bonus for me. I needed the extra money. It was just like such a fun fight. Um, I, I definitely got a little beat up. I, I took some to give some. But it's kind of like how I like to fight. Um, I like to get in there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, that was my probably my most fun fight that I've ever had, and it was really challenging too. And there's just a lot of drama to it, but it ended up being like really, really cool. But it was on YouTube for a while, had like 15 million views, and then they took it off because they want you to pay to watch it. So now it's on like you got to pay for some bullshit with Bellator, I think, to do it. But anyways, um, yeah, yeah, that was my one of my favorite fights. <laughs> That's that's amazing. Uh, we we love the the showstoppers that go in there to just brawl. I remember uh, Chris Lieben back in the day, one of my favorites, just because he went in there to just you know just to give it hell. You know, usually he would take you know 
10, 15 punches, hard punches just to get started. But once you hit that button, that guy was like no stop. And uh, yeah, that's that's absolutely amazing. Um, maybe you want to give us what uh, one of your favorite fights of all time was. Um, you know, not one of your fights, but one of your favorite fights that that uh, you you watched in in your fight career. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I kind of like the the older legends. You know, I'm a big fan of uh, Dan Henderson and Randy Couture. And um, being a big fan of them, I went to Dan Henderson's gym in Temecula, and I was there for a long time. And then now here in Vegas, I'm at Extreme Couture, which is Randy Couture's gym. So I've gotten to know like the whole family, and they've all been my coaches over the years. And um, watching their fights, man, Dan Henderson knocking the shit out of Bisping, that would have been... I think that's one of my, even though it's a brutal fight, it's like, dude, that God, I mean, Bisping's fine now. He talks fine. He's doing everything. He talks way better than me. I mean, he's like all looking schwazzy on TV. Bisping's doing great. So uh, Dan Henderson didn't didn't mess him up too bad. But if you watch that fight, you know, they call it the H-bomb. And um, yeah, I'm a big fan. That was yeah. one of the biggest knockouts ever, man. And that followed yeah. the UFC, the... Uh, the Ultimate Fighter show, where Dan Henderson's such a humble guy, right? And the abuse that he took from Michael Bisbin every single show. And you could just see the grin on Dan Henderson's face saying, dude, this ends in a fight, man. So you can run your mouth all you want. But man, it's just firing up the H-bomb. And my God, he almost clearly knocked off his head. Like, it was probably the closest I've seen to a head actually being uh, dismembered from a body. Um, and then he followed through with that absolutely crazy. I don't know if it was a punch or a forearm or an elbow, but man, for good measures, uh, he, he put him out. That That's yeah, man. I'm looking back at the pride days and, and the old UFC uh, fights with, yeah, like those legends, Chuck Liddell and and Ace Franklin and, and yeah. all these guys. Well, there was some epic, amazing fights yeah. back then. You said that about pride. I mean, do you remember? I was in the crowd. I was like front row. Somebody actually ended up getting me tickets to Pride 33. It was the only time they ever did it in Vegas. And Vanderlei Silva fought Dan Henderson. And like, it was a badass fight. And then Dan ends up knocking him out. Bro, that's another big fight. So see, I'm a big fan of Hendo. He had some amazing fights. And uh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, legend. I, I got the privilege to meet him at a random event in the Prince George, Canada, way up in the north. Um, it was absolutely weird. I had uh, ringside tables and uh, somebody comes up to me and it's like, hey, you know, Dan Henderson's here. And I'm like, that is a funny joke. We're in the middle of nowhere. Um, and Dan Henderson is definitely not here. And uh, turns out he was there. And uh, yeah, what a what a humble guy. Uh, I had a few too many beers and uh, I challenged him to get into the ring afterwards as a joke. Um, lucky he didn't take me up on that one because uh, I wouldn't be here today. That is for sure. Um, over to you, Louis Dog. Uh, let, let's keep on hitting Keith with the questions. Maybe we got some NFT related questions. Maybe we got some uh, more fight related questions. Maybe we can go to our audience because our audience is... Uh, yeah, our audience uh, had a whole slew of questions. Maybe we can go to a few of these ones. Yeah, for sure. Before jumping to our audience's question, I do have one for Keith, actually. Uh, I, I'm actually very curious to find out how do you get yourself involved with karate combat? Because I saw that you competed recently in the uh, tournament. And the second question is... Are yeah, you wait a minute. I got the second question. How do I oh. fight BitBoy Crypto? <laughs> I want to fight BitBoy Crypto. Keith, I need you to tell me what I need to do to get into that fight. The entire Superfans army knows I'm trying to pick this fight. You guys know that I know that wherever that Oompa Loompa shows up, we need to tell them that I'm next in line. So whatever it takes, I don't care if I have to pay to fight this Oompa Loompa, but whatever it takes, Keith, how the heck do I get involved? How do I get front row tickets to, to this event so I can jump in there and smack this beast? All right, boys, let me break it down. Let me tell you guys what's up. Okay, so I was on with the president of Karate Combat last night, and I'm doing everything I can to get a fight. And he promised me a fight on video. So it was on a video call. It's on my page. I reposted it. The thing about Crowded Combat is it's like so perfect for me, me specifically. It's, it's perfect for other guys too, I'm sure. But me being a, an aggressive striker, 
ah, oh, bro, it's so nice. And I don't have to worry about takedowns, but you have, it's kind of like, you, you just can't be, uh, I don't know. I don't even know how to put this because there are takedowns involved, but it's more like judo and like in transitions you could take down. So it's like, it's that, that's even nicer for me too. Cause sometimes I just like to drop down, do a quick double boom slam. And then I want to stand back up. I don't want to mess around on the ground too much. I'm just kind of doing it for like the slam is a strike, right? So that's kind of the way I'm thinking about it in my head sometimes. So that's what you can kind of do with karate combat. And it's really exciting. They they know how to make things kind of go viral. Uh, the minutes are they're only three minute rounds, but it's in like this pit, so everyone can see. It's really easy for you to see. Sometimes if you go to UFC event, it's kind of hard to see through the cage, and like there's these pillars and stuff. And sometimes guys lay on the cage or whatever. Well, you can't really do that because in this pit, if you fall like against this wall, they could just keep hitting you, and then the fight will be stopped. So. And they kind of call the fights. If you're on the side of the wall, just covering up, you're not defending yourself. You're not trying to get out of the position. They'll, they'll call the fight. So I feel like it. if you're in there and you get thrown to that wall, you better react quick. So it, it's, I don't know, it kind of brings a lot of urgency to the fight. So yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm going down there. I'm flying out there next week to uh, to go train. For, well, I'm going to fly out there actually after this weekend to train there for a week. And then basically get in with the whole team and tell them, look, man, you can pay me in karate token because you could swap it with uh, uh, Hedera, with HBAR, like I talked about that earlier. So I'm like, you know what? Pay me all in karate token. Maybe I'll ask for a little more money this time and then uh, see what's up. But, but yeah, my last fight with them, I went to Mexico City. They do it right before the UFCs. And uh, I got accidentally and illegally poked in the eye. My opponent was like, hey, I just poked you. I'm like, I don't care. Let's keep fighting. And uh, ended up getting stopped. And then the ref called it. It was a no contest. So it was kind of a fucking big waste of time. But it is what it is. Just brush yourself off. Get back on the horse. Just kind of made me more motivated to get back in there and oh, fight again. And um, I'm going to be a little more aggressive right off the bat. <laughs> just going to try to knock the guy out. Just like I was telling you in that fun fight. I'm going to bring that back. And uh, look. It's I, I rush them to the side of the pit and I'm I'm gonna be doing fine. So yeah, but back to your question about BitBoy. I swear to God, I'll put your name in the pool because they were looking for opponents for him. He had like four or five different opponents fall through, and they can only they only want influencers. So and you're you're an influencer. You're you're doing these huge spaces. And uh, I'm the yeah. founder of this project. I got a hundred thousand on Twitter, and I, I won't even knock him out in the first. I'll wait <laughs> till the second round to knock him out, so we make it a show. Yeah, I will yeah. play with this clown. And uh, yeah, whatever it takes, put my name in there. I'm, I'm ready to go tomorrow. It doesn't matter. Um, he knows that I'm looking for him. The super fans community is following him around. So um, I'm a real passionate guy. I haven't fought in probably, I don't even know, 15 years. But uh, I'm ready to go. I, I look like a little bit of an Oompa Loompa like him. So it's, it's uh, <laughs> dad bod versus dad bod. And uh, I, 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 couldn't, uh, I couldn't be more excited if I could be in the hat. So I feel um, you. Yeah, please put it on it. I'll say one thing about BitBoy, though. I do have some respect. Like, I didn't really care for him either way. I was just kind of neutral. I just thought he was just like, he's almost like this caricature in Web3. And, like, I didn't really ever have a real interaction with him. So I try not to judge people unless I really met them or had some type of real interaction with them personally. But um, so I was kind of, like, even keeled on the whole thing. And, um Everyone watched him fight. And I, I was proud of him as a person that's never had a fight to go up and fight. And he kind of like, he like put his tongue out. I did all this shit. And he was fighting some random guy. But that was like his third opponent that he was supposed to get. So at least he went through the whole process. And you got to give a man respect for that. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're still going to come for his head, try to take it off. But me as a person, I'm like, hey, man, like, I got some respect for him, you know? Uh, I really don't know anything about him, or I know he's done some things. I do know that, but, you know, we'll get into that. But, you know, one thing I want to say, this space is bullish. We got Shirley Lowe listening. That's a bullish indicator, just letting you guys know things are about to go up like crazy. 
I just I just followed Shirley. What's up, Shirley? Um, yeah, listen, I, she's in every space uh, all the time, everywhere, and she's been to a few of our spaces. We appreciate you in the audience for sure. Um, I hadn't followed you on this account because this is my kind of new account. It's only a couple months old and taken off like crazy. But now I'm following you. I'll find you easier all around the Twitter spaces sphere and on crypto Twitter. So welcome to this crazy show. Um, yeah, this is a different one because we're talking a lot about fighting, but now we're transitioning into crypto and fighting, which is really interesting. And as for BitBoy Crypto, I don't know what he's done. I'm not really caring what he's done. This is nothing personal whatsoever. It's all business. I want to go showcase, you know, my skills on behalf of the super fan army, we can create more engagement on this fight than any influencer in the space. I don't care if they got 20 okay. million, our super fans army will show up and make this the biggest fight karate combat has ever had. So if they want big, they want viral, then they pick me. I'm next. Cool. So moving on with this one, man. Uh Totally, totally fun that you're fighting in that organization. Fun yeah, that you have a fight coming up. We will track and trace that all the way along. Louis Dog, let's continue with some uh, fan questions. All right, man. Really love the, the questions and answers over here. But right over uh, to Discord, right? Our community member, congrats to you. Who am I? Dot Leon. His question is besides staking airdrops and interacting with DeFi platforms like SuperSwap, what other ways can superfans earn fan tokens? Over to you, Chris. Okay, that one's for me and not our special guest, but there is multiple ways. Obviously, tokenomics when it comes to a crypto project is incredibly important. You're basically creating a micro economy. The microeconomy uh, is only going to be healthy if you can introduce ways of interacting, growing your user base, and creating a tokenomics model that works. As most of you know, I've been in the space for, for since 2016, building products and building uh, projects. And you can see just a few of those projects like Nosana right now, uh, Effect.ai, and these things. If a token is able to pump, you know, 300, or what is it? 40,000% 40, in just a few months. Um, this is a testament of not giving away too many tokens. And when the narrative comes by, then things go to Valhalla. And uh, that's the deal. So there's a lot involved in creating tokenomics. But I think the most important that's lacking in this space, and it's fine because it's an innovative new space and everybody's experimenting with things. But it's like, how does that token work within your economy? Just like fiat currencies work within countries, you need to uh, structure it in a way that you have more, um, you know, more uh, uh, demand than you have supply going out, right? So we have lots of different features. Obviously, you guys are involved in the airdrop point system. Um, we have some incredible things coming up with our SocialFi platform where uh, creators are able to leverage the token to be able to leverage their super fans to do the same things we're doing with you. So soon you'll be able to earn cryptocurrencies for doing these tasks immediately, especially if your reputation score is up, especially if you've been doing good work with super fans. You guys will be selected as, uh, you know, the core group of people that are doing these tasks for, for um, this. We also been hearing about burning now listen burning tokens if you talk to any law firm that's uh you know connected to the regulators in in a lot of these jurisdictions um burning is is frowned upon for regulators i don't give a fuck about regulators and i never have now i don't want to jeopardize the the project and that's why we structure this company and this business the way that we do so we can really push the boundaries of what's possible in tokenomics. So burning tokens are going to come into effect. Um, there's multiple ways that these tokens are going to be burned. Some, it's going to be a percentage of the tips that are going to creators. A small percentage will just go to the burn pile. Um, when we have clients coming on board for our growth program, I don't know, I don't want to share the price list with you guys, but maybe it's time to share the price list because there is no crypto project that we have talked to in the last couple of weeks that didn't pay that price. And so some of those tokens will be burned, you know, um, we, we accept USDT, USDC, 
or fan tokens. But if they're paying in the USD TRC, we convert that immediately to fan tokens. And we have that in our treasury that will go into our airdrop pools. But then also we will have a burn mechanism for a lot of that. So that's one methodology that takes tokens out of supply, which is a very uh, beautiful thing to do if you want to, to limit the supply and continue to create demand. Um, and then there's going to be multiple other ways. When we launch this social fi network, not only will you be earning fan on, on all of your key trades and, and stuff like this, but you will also be earning Solana, Solana tokens with every key trade that you have. We're going to have all kinds of affiliate programs for people to be able to participate in. Um, I, I think with all the experience I've had in this industry, this is the most robust tokenomics of, I, I would love to see another project that's even close to some of the things that we will implement. But the whole entire objective is to make sure that the incentive machine works, but it works in a way that you participate with these tokens as well. We want people tipping, we want people buying and selling keys, we want trading fee rebates happening on the platform, we want uh, creators to be leveraging this token to pay you to do tasks for them as well, whether it be join a space or, um, you know, subscribe on YouTube or comment on this or go on to Dex tools and upvote and whatever it is, you guys are maniacs. There's no task that we have done that you guys didn't show up, including yesterday's task with Hugo Boss. We did a drop with Hugo Boss. It wasn't us, but we were participating uh, with our, our super fans army. That thing sold out so friggin' quickly, and that was definitely because of us. And um, yeah, a lot of you guys participated. So there's like nothing we can't do. If a project or a company has a drop, that value that we get from you know these projects and these people, I just want that to go back to our super fans and figure out ways to incentivize you guys more. Um, you know, this needs to be a healthy environment. The project needs to create some kind of revenue to continue to go and continue to build. But this is more like a DAO than anything else. And as we work towards more of a DAO structure, the, in the meantime, it's us to, to plan out how these tokenomics work to create a very healthy uh, project. If you're just joining, we are super fans. We are building the future of Social Fi. Our objective, our mission, our vision is to onboard the next one billion web three users sounds amb ambitious it's incredibly ambitious but if you think about it there's about five billion people on this planet that have a phone participate on this thing we call the internet and uh, they're on social media so that's our total addressable market out there is five billion that will soon become six billion and seven billion as more people get these phones in their hands and the technology advances and we're not building the next decentralized social media app we're creating the crypto rails on the side of every platform. We don't wanna compete with uh, Twitter. We want to amplify Twitter. If you are doing great on Twitter or you need help on Twitter to grow and expand even more, Superfans will be your home for the best results that you can get out of anything that's on the market. And then we will move into YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and wherever content creators live, that's where we'll be and helping and supporting with AI creator tools, with environments and uh, f private feeds to share your alpha with your, your key holders and a bunch of other features that uh, you just won't find anywhere else. So that's super fans. That's what we're doing. Let's go to the next question, Louis. All right. So the next question is, is there a possibility for MMA organizations to utilize social five concepts? like super fans to enhance fan involvement, etc. So what potential benefits can MMA fighters get from this? This question is by Siderix. Listen, I, I will answer this one because I, I think we have a really great game plan. I'm, I'm connected to some fighters. I'm newly connected uh, to, to, you know, the KO kid here, Keith Berry. Um, he's connected to uh, Sean Strickland, who... Uh, I don't want to fight strong Sean Strickland. That's absolutely for sure. That would be the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, but I, I would love to introduce monetization ways for these fighters to earn a lot more. It's a riddle sometimes on social media how to make that work, you know. And there's some fighters out there like Israel Adesanya who, who really is able to capture the audience and build up his brand. But there's a whole bunch of others that, 
you know, they find it to be a bit of a mystery. They don't know what content's hitting, how to, uh, you know, encourage the engagement. And we're here for those guys. So we've all already talked to the biggest South American fight organization and have been talking about onboarding a lot of their top fighters who are, are fairly big on a few social media platforms and having them involved. So it's a very easy transition to go to market with Web3 users and then transition where, you know, some of our passions are as a team, but also the same demographic, that 18 to 35 year old kind of demographic, that will definitely be the next uh, shot. We have some NBA people that uh, are, are connected in our community, and we really want to bring this to those guys, because as you become an athlete, this is the truth of the matter. If you're a restaurant, uh, uh, a hospital, a government, um, a surf shop, or an MMA fighter or a professional athlete, you are a social media person first. If you want to do anything and you want to compete with competitors for the mind share of your personal brand, you're social media first. And so that's what Superfan sets out to do, teach, train, and help amplify and accelerate the growth of social media um, people out there that are trying to build their personal brand. If we invite you into our ecosystem, I can guarantee you things are going to change very quick. It, didn't it took no time at all for a couple of people that we supported to get to a monetization on Twitter um, that they just couldn't hit before. It takes no time. Three billion impressions in three months for super fans. It's insane. Nobody can hit these numbers, but us super fans can. And so that leads right into something that's pretty important, I think, to, to give you guys an update, you super fans, super freaks. Um, and when I say super freaks, I mean it with all the love in my heart, man. You know, I'm also a super freak. Um, but we have the, the Super Fans Creators Club that if you see in our roadmap, we were going to announce this and push this, you know, two or three months down the road as our community and our offering grew. But now we're offering this as a, a product to big, huge companies in the Web3 space. They're giving us tons of money. This thing's already working. So the first 10 Superfan uh, Creators Club members, a pretty exclusive club of people, will be hitting the streets in the next 10 to 15 days. Uh, you guys are going to meet these creators. We have a couple of spots left, so we will put out in Discord and probably on our website the application form so we can highlight and pick a couple of members to join this club. Some of these people, and I think we have them in the audience, some of them have three million followers. Some of them, one of them particularly, our favorite super fan, Dasha Day, has zero followers. And what we're going to do is showcase how we help the biggest of the big, the smallest of the small, we learn together, we go forward. You can think of it as the Y Combinator of uh, crypto Twitter um, expansion, you know? So all of the people that take part will move on and, and be the alumni of this program to help teach and, and uh, help the next creators and the next creator club. And Dasha, maybe we can go to you for an update. I know that we're putting together content. I see your nose to the grindstone, like grinding hard. Um, yeah, what does it mean uh, to be in the Creators Club? And like, are you nervous? Obviously, you haven't done this before. Um, it's in a space where you're learning a lot. And maybe you can give us a little bit of the journey of like what's working, what's exciting and what's scary and not working. Maybe you can give us uh, some some uh, yeah, some tips. Nervous would probably be an understatement. A little bit. I can say a little bit nervous. Um, I think the hardest thing is trying to find my, um, my passion, my niche in this huge world. Um, and as you've mentioned, obviously, my, uh, my passion, which I found, is meme coins. So NFTs are something I am trying to figure out. Uh, but yeah, meme coins, I think, is, uh, has got my heart. So going forward, I would like to be addressed as the meme coin guru or the meme coin queen, um, if that name hasn't been taken already. Um, so I'm currently in the process, as well as content in the background, I am creating my meme coin bible, which um, I should be releasing soon. And um, it's, I mean, this whole journey has just been up and down and learning and the people that I've been surrounded by, especially from super fans and the support that I'm getting is, well, 
it's like no other and it just it feels like such a family feeling so I couldn't be luckier um, and I would encourage anyone and everyone to try and get the last couple of spots uh, but I know we're very choosy and very picky at the moment with who we choose but um, I mean ugh, it couldn't be such a, a fun journey and uh, I'm really looking forward to what else it has in store and Next time we'll be talking, I will give you all the alpha on all the meme coins. Boom. I think this is a really important thing for all of you aspiring content creators out there. We've sat down with Dasha and we kind of looked at like the whole entire ecosystem. We looked through a few things and planning your strategy um, is probably the most important. So you can at least dedicate to something and then, you know, follow that. And if you need to pivot from there, it's no problem to pivot from there. Um, but it's good to plan your content uh, schedule and get that done. Now, the reality of planning it and then setting out, you know, to hit some dates and actually hitting those dates are a whole different story. But uh, yeah, we're very excited. If you're not following Dash a day, get onto her Twitter right this minute and, and uh, follow her, man. But before she blows up, man, you can say that you found her before she became the meme coin guru, the meme coin princess. Um, yeah, you, you were here first. So we're really excited about your journey. We have another special guest on the uh, speaker panel here. We were talking about you already uh, with your good friend NFT Kid, uh, a.k.a. KO Kid. Um, our new friend here at Superfans. Um, we have Be Nice uh, with the, the new Speed Pass. Um, we'd love to hear in your own words. We've heard about it uh, already from Keith, but we'd love to hear about this project and, and we really want to support. So uh, please uh, take the stage. Tell us who you are, what you're about, and, and how can we help? Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, my name is Carter Nice. I am the CEO and one of the co-founders of Be Nice Productions, and I absolutely appreciate this opportunity to speak to you and this amazing community that you find folks have. Keith, thank you so much for getting this amazing invite. Um, I am so proud of what uh, our team is doing and what we have set forth to do. So look, guys, we are calling out. We're looking for help. Uh, we are preparing to participate in our 11th year uh, for the Make-A-Wish Foundation at the Celebration Exotic Car Club. And uh, what we do, and look, guys, we already have the exotic cars. We're IRL business owners. Uh, we got into Web3 to do it better, and we haven't taken any investor money yet. That's the great news. And the meme coin queen, you may want to think about what I'm about to tell you guys and the whole crowd here. Guys, we're selling our first NFT to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation, to uh, raise the capital, the correct capital, to finish our art and music platform, which is going to be, when I say off the chain, it's going to be amazing. We have spent 18 months developing silently in the bear, uh, and we're coming out of the bear with a head full of steam. We're feeling great. I want to get into this, uh, this speed pass. What is it? Well, what we've decided to do is we are offering 3,333 Be Nice Speed Passes. Now, the first uh, thing that I want to tell you is the Speed Pass is your, the ignition switch. It's the, it's the key to the, unlocking the Creator's Token, the Be Nice Token. And uh, the Creator's Token will be used on our platform uh, to have the lowest transaction fees to mint NFTs, on the Ethereum network to start. Uh, we're utilizing Polygon internally, but uh, when I tell you this, guys, we have something special. We have an amazing team. Uh, the NFT, let's talk about that. What is that? So what we're doing is 3,333 uh, NFTs, and you're not gonna know what you have until we do our reveal. So there's four levels. We have a gold tier, a platinum tier, a carbon tier, and a hologram tier. Uh, all of these are very special NFTs. They're beautiful. Uh, I would love to show everybody, uh, but I can't. It's a surprise what it is, but I will explain this NFT. It is our world-famous Be Nice C8 Corvette on the track. Uh, what we did was we basically took video footage and then we rendered it down through Unity and we made an actual it's, – it, it's almost lifelike. People look at it and say, wow, this is lifelike. Uh, it's a music video NFT. So our jingle, the Be Nice song, 
uh, by Nessie the Rilla, amazing Web3 artist. We took the Be Nice song that he created. We put it to the, 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 uh, the vehicle on the track. Then what we did was in order to um, make them all different, we framed them in a glass clear frame. So you, you have either gold, platinum, carbon, or hologram. Now, what's so special about this NFT? Well, it's an event NFT. It is the key to uh, our, our platform and our PFP mint. It is a mint pass. So in order to get on the private sale of the Be Nice token, you must own a Be Nice Speed Pass. It also will token gate you into our PFP project. So that is the the lasting utility with it. But right now, it gives you entrance to our event in Daytona, Florida, and Celebration, Florida. So the exotic, we are uh, participating in a five day event. It starts on April fifth, and it runs to the ninth. It's three days in Celebration, Florida with a amazing uh, a amount of celebrities and pro athletes that will be there with us. Uh, I will go through the list. The list keeps growing of sponsors and people that are going to help us out with this event down there. Uh, so t- let's talk about the tiers. So gold tier, you're going to get all the unlockable content and pictures from the event. Not only is that three days of an exotic car show, where 350 of the most exotic cars in the world and movie cars will be there on the streets of Celebration, Florida. Then there are two days of, of racing. So we're going to take about 150 of those exotic cars from uh, Camaros all the way to Pagani. So that's a big spread. So we're gonna, you're going to see some of the most unbelievable vehicles in the world. You're going to see $5 million vehicles racing on Daytona. Now, the cool part about this is we're tying it into the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and this is where it's important. Termini- terminally ill children getting their last wish. What does that mean? Two days, we're going to have kids coming from you know wherever they are being treated or their homes with their families to get that wish. They're going to get the opportunity to, to talk to the professional drivers and the semi-pro drivers, be in our garages and our pits, be around all these exotic cars and all of these celebrities and athletes who happen to have their exotic cars and are going to participate as well. Uh, some of these children's last wish is to be in a race car uh, on a track. So there are specific vehicles that are outfitted for these disabled or terminally ill children. They're generally large SUVs. We put the kids in the SUV and then we pace them and they all get their turn. It's a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing. Man, thank you so much uh, for what you do in the space. These things, uh, as I was saying to Keith, uh, are are very close to my heart being uh, in the space, working with the United Nations and doing this stuff. This is a huge one. We've pinned you up uh, on the teleprompter here in the space. And uh, if you haven't joined uh, the Be Nice crew, uh, and their accounts, uh, then go at least, at the very least, give them a follow, give them some comments, give them some love, give them some flowers. Um, but at the very, uh, you know, maybe not the most, but what you can do if you're winning on meme coins, if you're winning on something in the space, man, these are really important initiatives, man, that will really make you feel good. And they'll give you good fucking karma. So make sure you go in and take part in these initiatives. If you're a greedy, greedy guy, um, you're probably going to lose it all, so you better be careful. Go go uh, support these initiatives because they're incredibly important, um, especially in this space that a lot of people are, are weary about. When they start hearing about, you know, these people in the space that are making a difference, that's when we're going to onboard the rest of the masses that are confused and looking at meme coins and thinking, what the hell is going on over here? Um, so, yeah, really appreciate you up here on stage and... Uh, yeah, thanks for what you do in the space. And thanks, uh, NFT kid, Mr. Keith. Uh, thanks for the introduction and thanks for, uh, yeah, thanks for, for uh, yeah, thanks for showing I really us. Appreciate, I appreciate you guys. I rugged there for a moment. There are four different levels of NFTs. If you go to benice.io, the Mint page is open. You can pay with CrossMint or Ethereum. We really, really need your support, guys. We weren't given a lot of time. Uh, to do this, uh, the folks at the Central Florida Car Club, 
uh, aren't really hip on the crypto or NFTs. They didn't understand. You need months and months. It took me 10 and a half months to get them to say, okay, go ahead and do it. Uh, but we have something very special. You get one of four different NFTs. You'll end up with some of our beautiful merch if you get the, the standard NFT, along with unlockable content. The second level, you end up with one of our custom hoodies, along with the content from the first uh, level. Tier two, you can come join us over at the track. We want people to come to this event. So if you wish to come join us, uh, tier two, also you get a $1,000 Apple gift card as a thank you and a big Be Nice swag bag. Now tier one, you get a $5,000 gift card, thank you, along with the ultimate swag bag. You get the opportunity. If you want to come to Daytona, come on in and you get a ride in the car on the track. So that's up to five, that's $5,000, a ride on the track. And if we mint out this whole thing, guys, please help us out. Someone's going to win 25,000 USDT. This is a fully doxed team and project. You can go to be nice.io. Myself, the complete team is here. Nobody's hiding behind PFPs. We are real. We are here to stay. And we are looking forward to onboarding people to this Web3 space. Help us show Make-A-Wish Foundation that we in Web3 can make a difference. If this one works, they'll give us all the runway in the world for other uh, opportunities with other charities and so on and so forth. So thank you so much for the time. I greatly appreciate all of you. Be nice.io. Remember, guys, it feels great to be nice. Do something special. Help a kid. Help us out. Thank you again for the time. Our absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for, for coming to the show and sharing this stuff. Like I said, guys, the very least, give some likes, give some flowers, give some comments. Um, and uh, if you're winning in the crypto markets, which most of our uh, most of us am at this current moment, then, yeah, spread that wealth and, and give to things that really, really, really matter. So really appreciate you there. Um, this has been a banger of a show. This has been so much fun, like new speakers talking about all kinds of different subjects and stuff. Um, we're going to wrap up here in a minute, but I think you guys want a little bit of alpha on what's going on at Superfans. We have an NFT drop that's coming. Only people that are staking in our platform are going to get that NFT drop. There is no price of that NFT drop. We have built NFT generators in the past. We know what we're doing there. We can deploy and make that happen pretty darn quickly. Um, it will be a fortune cookie, but what you do with that fortune cookie, who knows? Well, I know. But uh, it's going to be a very fun game that we play uh, for the next little while with uh, this NFT drop. And you only get it if you're staking. If you are at tier five and you are over that minimum tier five level of 25,000 fan tokens, for every additional 20,000 fan tokens, you will get an additional NFT. Tier five, get five NFTs. Tier four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. But if you're at tier five and you got hundreds of thousands of tokens like our friend Tony Trader, by the way, I'm coming back for first spot on that staking uh, leaderboard, um, then yeah, you're, you're in store for a bunch of these uh, fortune cookies. You will be able to open them up in a few different ways. And as you open them up, every one you open, you'll receive another one until all the fortune cookies are gone. So that's a fun thing. Creators Club is ramping up. It is the most fun time ever when you meet some of the people that are taking part in the first ever Superfans Creators Club. You are going to be blown away. We're going to go on a journey with them. They will take us on a journey and we will support them on a journey of content creation, super ridiculous cyber speed growth in this industry we want to help them monetize or push the narratives that they're doing uh, in this space. And they are all doing different things on different platforms. One thing in common, they're all on X, a.k.a. Twitter. Um, and we're really looking forward to, to sharing, you know, everybody that's involved there. They will join us for many different spaces and many different initiatives all over the globe, all over the Internet. So that thing is completely and super fun. We also have the Socialfy platform that's in full development right now. We are crunching code. We are doing things. We are aligned with some of the biggest, uh, you know, names in the industry right now. So things are getting fun, fun, fun. We are self-funded. So we haven't even gone into a funding raise. Uh, the longer we can take this without a funding raise, the more these guys are going to have to pay up to ensure that Superfan succeeds for 
10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years in the future. Uh, we're here to stay. Um, this is the last project I will ever work on, and I will work on it till the day I die. That's a guarantee to you super freaks out there. Um, we're going nowhere. We're building. We're getting bigger. We're getting better with every single moment in time. So most exciting project I've ever been involved in. Look at who's on stage, man. Like, what the hell is this? I was doing spaces last year for another little project, and we didn't have the KO kid. We didn't have NFT projects that are working on behalf or working with or working for uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation, you know? Some of the people in the audience that we have coming up here with Mario Naveau and all of these, you know, big, huge names in the space. I don't, I, oh man, there's one other thing I want to share with you guys, but I can't, but it starts with killer. It ends with whales and I'm really not allowed to talk about it anymore, but uh, that's the alpha there. If you know what I'm saying, then you know what I'm saying. Lots going on with super fans, man. As Conor McGregor once said, we're not here to take part. We're here to take over. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So yeah, Hang on for the ride. We appreciate each and every single one of you super fans. What you're doing to support us, to support this project, to support other content creators is going to come all the way around. I know that you guys are enjoying yourselves. You're benefiting from rewards, but that's just the, 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 the tiny little foundational layer here with the opportunities that we want to make sure you guys get going forward. This is not... Uh, a one-time, two-time, three-time airdrop campaign. We want to change the future of work. We want you to be wherever you want to be on this planet and do the things that you're doing anyways, interacting on social media and getting rewarded to do so. Supporting some of the best creators in this space so creators and fans alike can win together. That's what Superfans is about. That's what we're building. And uh, we're just getting started. We're three months old. Look at us now. Three months old. Imagine when we hit the one year mark. I don't know where we'll be, but we should party together somewhere. Louis Dog, let's put together some kind of competition. The 10 biggest, baddest super fans meet us somewhere really nice. And we have some drinks and just continue working because uh, there's no time for, for super parties, but we might be able to share a few drinks in a year. So that is a wrap for this episode. Episode 18. We didn't talk too much about artificial intelligence because we had a, a really special guest. And I haven't been talking about fighting uh, for about three days. So uh, I got my fix, and that's a beautiful thing. So I'd like to thank everybody up here. Keith Berry, thank you so much. If, you don't, uh, if you're not uh, following Keith Berry, make sure you do so. Be nice. Follow that guy right now. We got Dash a Day. Thanks for showing up. Make sure you follow Dash a Day. And uh, Louie Dog, of course, Remote Cryptoverse. Um, that guy's the alpha master of the universe. So you should be following that guy because when that guy tells me to do something, it's, it's the thing. It's the thing to, to, to get in on. So this guy sees everything all at the same time. So that's a wrap for this episode. Thanks again, Keith. Thanks again, super freaks, super fans. And we will see you. What day is it today? I don't even know. We'll see you at the next episode. I think it's Monday. Oh, no, it's Friday. Um, yeah, we'll see you in the next uh, episode on Monday. Have a good weekend. Peace.